Welcome in Carudor. Today, we are going to continue about the main topic in chapter 3, the deviation of light in the triangular prism. Be attention, be attention and concentrate with me. Here, let's start by what are the factors affecting the angle of deviation? What are the factors affecting the angle of deviation? Let's start, of course, the angle of deviation alpha, the angle of deviation alpha is affected by three main factors, which are first angle of incidence, phi one, you number one. Number two, refractive angle of the prism. Refractive angle of the prism, A capital. It's number two. Number three, refractive index of the prism material. Refractive index of the prism material. So, what are the factors affecting on? What are the factors affecting on the angle of deviation? The angle of deviation is affected by three main factors. Three factors. Three only factors, which are? Three factors only, which are? First, number one, angle of incidence, phi one. Number two, refractive angle of the prism. Number three, refractive index of the prism material. That's for the factors affecting on the angle of deviation. For a light of a certain wavelength, for a light for a certain wavelength passing through the same prism. Angle of deviation here depends upon only, only angle of incidence, yes. It depends only for the same prism, for a light of certain wavelengths passing through the same prism, same prism. So here, angle of deviation depends on angle of incidence only in this case. Okay, after that, here for the practical study for this relation at the position of minimum deviation position of minimum deviation you have to concentrate well here at the small angles of incidence at the small angles of incidence here phi 1 increases when phi 1 increases here as you see alpha decreases but but that's for small angles that's for small angles as you see please you have to concentrate very well in this graph you have to concentrate very well in this graph. Here, phi 1 increases, increases, yeah, as I go. But what's, what will happen to alpha? Alpha decreases. Here, at this point, phi 1 is small. But alpha is great, is high, has a high value. When, when phi 1 increases, yes, alpha decreases. Then, then it reaches to this point. It reaches to this position, which is called the position of minimum deviation. The position at this point, at this point, the position of minimum deviation. After that, until alpha reaches a minimum value called the minimum angle of deviation, and its symbol is alpha node. Its symbol is alpha node. At a certain angle of incidence, at a certain angle of incidence, which is phi node. After that, this is the position. This is the position of minimum deviation. When the angle of incidence increases, what will happen? Yes, the angle of deviation also increases. So, at the beginning, at the small angles, small angles of incidence, yes, small angles of incidence, when the angle of incidence increases, yes, alpha decreases until we reach to a position of a minimum deviation here at alpha node. Alpha node, the position, the angle of deviation, but at the minimum deviation. At angle of incidence, which is called phi node. After that, when the angle of incidence increases, yes, the angle of deviation also increases. This graph is very important. And we can base on this graph a very important relationship. Why? Here, here, as you see, at the position of minimum deviation, at the position of minimum deviation, phi 1, phi 1, the angle of incidence on the first surface, equals, yes, phi 1 equals theta 2, equals phi naught. Again, phi 1 
equals theta 2 equals phi naught but theta 1 theta 1 equals phi 2 equals theta naught please please don't forget it it's very important please don't forget it so phi 1 equals theta 2 equals phi naught also also theta 1 theta 1 equals phi 2 equals theta naught so here as you know as you know before that in the previous part please don't forget it a equals theta 1 plus phi 2 a equals theta 1 plus phi 2 so here theta 1 equals theta naught phi 2 here equals also theta naught theta naught plus theta naught equals 2 theta naught so a equals 2 theta naught so theta naught equals a over 2 that's for the first relation okay but also you have also you know very well alpha equals phi 1 plus theta 2 minus a alpha equals phi 1 plus theta 2 minus a so phi 1 here yes it's phi naught theta 2 here yes it is phi naught also so alpha equals phi naught plus phi naught minus a phi naught plus phi naught equals 2 phi naught so alpha naught equals 2 phi naught minus a so phi naught equals yes alpha naught plus a divided 2 so we have here the value of theta naught and phi naught theta naught equals a over 2 phi naught equals alpha naught plus a over 2 so from a snail's law from a snail's law any prism divided and air equals sine phi naught divided sine theta naught and the prism divided and the air equals sine phi naught divided sine theta naught equals yes and the air equals one approximately equals one so and the prism and the prism for the prism material the absolute refractive index for the prism material equals sine phi naught divided sine theta naught equals sine alpha naught plus a over 2 divided sine a over 2 as you see so n prism equals sine alpha naught plus a over 2 divided sine a over 2 that's for the position of the minimum deviation so Snell's law could be written as a, as the following we can we can write and the prism equals yes sine phi 1 divided sine theta 1 or and the prism equals sine theta 2 divided sine phi 2 so we have very important notes we have very important notes in a triangular prism as the angle of incidence phi 1 increases what will happen first when phi 1 increases we have to return to this figure here in this figure, when phi 1 increases, what will happen here in this, in this figure? What will happen when phi 1, my question now, please don't forget my question. What will happen when phi 1 increases? Here, when phi 1 increases, from a stands low, so theta 1 also, theta 1 decreases or increases? Yes, increases. So phi 1 increases, theta 1 increases. Phi 1 increases, yes, theta 1 increases, but phi 1 increases, theta 1 increases also. What will happen to phi 2, the value of phi 2? As you know, A equals, A equals refractive angle of the prism A equals theta 1 plus phi 2, okay? So, when theta 1 increases, so phi 2, yes, decreases. Why? As you know, A equals theta 1 plus phi 2. For example, A equals, A equals 4 plus 6. 4 plus 6, yes, equals 10. When 4 is, 4 is theta 1. Theta 1 now is increased to be 7. So A is constant, 10. 
So 10 equals 7 plus 5, 2. So 5, 2 equals 3. So when theta 1 gets increased, so 5, 2 gets decreased. And when 5, 2 gets decreased, so theta 2 decreased. So when 5, 1 increases, when 5, 1 increases, what will happen? 5, 1 increases, theta 1 increases, phi 2 decreases, finally, finally, theta 2 decreases. That's a very important relation. And we hear in a triangular prism, as the angle of incidence phi 1 increases, the angle of refraction phi 1, the angle of refraction theta 1 increases, the angle of the second, the incidence theta 1 decreases, the angle of emergence theta 2 decreases. I repeat it again. The angle of refraction, the angle of refraction theta 1 increases. The angle of the second, the angle of reflection on the second the surface theta phi 2, phi 2 decreases. Finally, theta 2 decreases also. Phi 1 increases, phi 1 increases, so theta 1, yes, increases. Then, when phi 1 increases, theta 1 increases, so phi 2 decreases. Finally, theta 2 decreases. At the end, I hope to understood the deviation of light in a triangular prism very, very, very well. It is a very important topic, as I told you before, in our chapter. Thank you, and hope to join us in the next part. And goodbye. Thank <music> you.